What are those key lessons that you have learned and that you've seen from your work with organizations across sectors that mm -hmm. leaders can take away so that they can be better prepared for handling organizational mm -hmm. crises? Yeah, you know, uh, I think lesson number one is to recognize that you are not immune. Uh, every single person, every single organization, every single team could be vulnerable. One of the things I often do is go through a variety of different industries and talk about the disruptions that have taken place in that industry, how, how the world has really dramatically, dramatically changed. Whether it's, you know, cell phone industry completely changing over time or, you know, automobile uh, industry, TV, um, uh, and healthcare. Uh, and each of these industries or sectors, and education for that matter, right, uh, have changed dramatically. And sometimes I talk to groups and, 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 and you know, I, I give some of these examples and somebody raises their hand and says, you know, you know Sid, uh, that's great. That might apply there, but we're different. And I love that line, we're different. Uh, of course you're different, but are you immune to the laws of business and human nature? Because so many of the mistakes that occur are human nature mistakes. So lesson number one, uh, Let's get a little more humility that we are vulnerable to what could go wrong and to changes that are going on. Number two, and related to that is, I think, um, when I've studied organizations and leaders that have not adapted to change, the primary reason that happens is because of very human, um, uh, human reasons. People are mostly, uh, most of the time, it's not that they're unable to change, it's, uh, it's that they're unwilling. It's a, question of, uh, it's a question of will and motivation and maybe courage to some extent. Uh, it's not that it's easy to change and adapt, of course not, but most of the companies that have failed that I've studied over the years, uh, the, reason that the, the reason those things happen at the end of the day is senior leaders or leaders of any team throughout that organization uh, just are unwilling to make the tough choices to adapt to the situations that are around them. And, and, and that leads me to lesson number uh, three, uh, and, and I call that intellectual honesty. Uh, it is just such a hallmark of great leaders. Intellectual honesty means that we face up to the world the way, it, the way that it is and not the way that we wish it would be. There's a bit of a mental health side to that too if you really think about that. We all wish our lives would be even better or our businesses would be even more successful or we wouldn't have these problems with this group or that group. But we, we just have to face up to the way, that, the way that it is. And once you do that and you recognize, you know, this is the world, then you can have clear eyes and say, okay, this is the reality. Let's figure out a way to adapt, to adjust, and actually take advantage of things that, that maybe uh, may have been weaknesses and turn them into strengths if we can, or at a minimum, uh, uh, make the changes that are needed. So a lot of what I'm talking about really, in fact, each of these three lessons are really about people, right? Really about leaders. That's why you know, the world of HR is so fundamentally critical to, to this, because it's all about, I mean, the world of HR is about leadership. And, and the best organizations will have the best leaders. And what is the best, wh who are the best leaders? There's a lot of things we could, we could put into that list, but I'm gonna say you know, adaptability, I'm gonna say open-mindedness, uh, certainly in, um, 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 uh, intellectual honesty as well.